Hello, hello, and welcome to another hometown daily news show. I am Mayor Watt, and today's episode is for November 24th, 2022. I don't have a title for today's episode, but it'll pop up later at some point. Let's get into today's shoe. Hey, look at that. Hello. I am Mayor Watt. That is hometown.com. Well, that's one of the lists of articles from hometown. Let's get right into it. Today is a holiday for many people. Um, For others, it is absolutely just another ordinary day. And still others, well, they don't really buy into this holiday period thing. As I've said in other places, you know, depending on what side of the fence you're on, something has meaning, doesn't have meaning, or has a negative meaning. Yep. Let's click some links and check out what's going on around the world in the last 24 hours. I've got about nine articles. It pales in comparison to the number of articles that my uh, aggregator gathers up. It's referred to as gatherer at hometown, um, but it um, kind of scoops up information from about 200 sources that provide it um, openly. It doesn't, it's not a screen scraper. It's not something that's, um, you know, kind of a wear and tear on somebody's other systems, but, um, I do consume quite a bit of information each day, even the holidays like today. And so I've already selected a bunch of articles, runs the gamut from maybe politics, maybe, but there's tech business society, definitely for sure in here. Let's get into it. FTX owned an $11.5 million stake in a tiny rural bank in Washington state with just three employees, according to bankruptcy hearings. So Farmington State Bank had three staff and was the 26th smallest bank in America out of 4,800. Then FTX bought an $11.5 million stake in the bank and it emerged during FTX's bankruptcy case. That stake was more than twice the bank's previous net worth. So what's going on here? It certainly seems like something's getting washed. FTX has come under more scrutiny after it emerged that the collapsed crypto giant owned an $11.5 million stake in one of America's smallest banks. What's going on here? What is going to come out of this? Pete Sim over at Business Insider is the author of this article. What do you think somebody is doing when they pay more for something than it's worth? They just really want to be a part of a bank that has three employees and half the value of the investment. I mean, unless they are planning on exploding that business, which banks don't normally just kind of just kind of blow up like that. Farmington state bank, which is based in a small town of Farmington in a rural farming region, let's say farming a little bit more of uh, Whitman County, Washington was described as no frills by local newspaper, the Spokesman Review in 2010, a 12 year old article that talks about these people. Um, it's then President John Widman told the newspaper that it had stopped making mortgage loans because the paperwork was too much effort. <laughs> As a single brain branch had three employees until this year and didn't offer online banking or even credit cards, it instead specialized in agricultural loans to farmers. Yeah, I think some questions are growing. Ties between the Farmers Bank and the crypto exchange began in March this year when FTX's sister company, Alameda Research, 
invested in Farmington's parent company, FBH. The purchase was led by Ramnick Aurora, one of Sam Bankman Fried's inner circle, who was often responsible for such larger deals, for much larger deals. Yeah, so what, again, what is going on here? This is an interesting article. So it says here, online, the bank now appears as Moonstone Bank, a name which was trademarked a few days before FTX's investment. Moonstone doesn't mention cryptocurrency, but does say that it wants to support the evolution of next generation finance. So what, they're pivoting this bank with a doubling of its initial investment or its current value? Interesting, right? In the third quarter this year, deposits jumped to 84 million from 10 million, 85% of which came from just four accounts, according to FDIC data cited by the Times. Yeah, I think there's some shenanigans going on. This is going to be so hard to unwind. But there are specialists, forensic auditors that are going to be going through this with a fine tooth comb. This person, is, I mean, Bankman Freed is pretty much done for. Um, surely has pissed off the wrong people. The next article is in the Mobile Channel. Physicists strike gold solving 50 year lightning mystery. I think this is awesome. Um, I love lightning. I love th thunderstorms. Where there's thunder, there's typically lightning. So you may not see it, but it's there. The chances of being struck by lightning are less than one in a million, but those odds shortened considerably this month when more than 4.2 million lightning strikes were recorded in every Australian state and territory over the weekend of November 12th and 13th. Pretty fascinating. So there is a lightning tracker. You can actually do a search, Google search lightning tracker, and it'll show you when things are popping, I guess, so to speak. Wow. Wow. Sorry about that. So it says here, when you consider that each lightning strike travels more than 320,000 kilometers per hour, that's a massive amount of electricity. Yet ever wondered about lightning for the past 50 years, scientists around the world have debated why lightning zigzags and how it's connected to the thunder cloud above. There hasn't been a definitive explanation until now. Well, apparently it solves both mysteries, what they have done. Uh, former Cicero uh, scientist, Dr. John Loke, maybe Loki, I'm not sure. And now a uh, UniSA adjunct research professor says the physics of lightning has stumped the best scientific minds for decades. So this is what's cool about it, right? So it, they talk about how it's zigzagging um, and why the electric, uh, the electrically conducting column connecting the steps with the cloud remains dark and how lightning can travel over kilometers. So they call it a singlet delta metastable oxygen molecule. That's what causes it to zigzag Basically, lightning happens when electrons hit oxygen molecules with enough energy to create high energy singlet delta um, oxygen molecules. And after colliding with the molecules, the detached electrons form a highly conducting step, initially luminous, that redistributes the electric field, causing successive steps. Apparently, this leads to that stagger step kind of motion as it arcs to the ground quote we need to understand how lightning is initi initiated so that we can work out how to better protect buildings airplanes skyscrapers which i would say is buildings valuable churches screw those unvaluable churches those worthless churches yeah they can be struck by lightning screw them and people of course, people. Can you imagine being in a high lightning territory somewhere and you actually have a lightning pole out there that can grab that electricity and charge something with it? That'd be great, right? 
look how many four how many 4.2 million lightning strikes were recorded in every australian state and territory over the weekend of just two days november 12th and 13th the amount of power that could have been stored would have been tremendous well apparently that's what it is so it could change uh with new australian lightning protection standards recommending that uh roofs be earthed um here in the states certain building code require certain things to be grounded so that uh if a lightning strike were to hit that you know things wouldn't blow up because it carries a charge to a gas main or something like that i think that it's important stuff this is why we do fundamental research and it may be expensive. It might actually prove a negative, but it's still good research um, as long as it's done properly. So let's move on to the next article. Uh, the next article is uh, The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie, Reverie VR Content Support Detailed. Um, so I, oh, here, I'll even show up. Da -dum, da -dum, it's right here. Da -da, I have my Pico. And uh, it's a battery pack that gets strapped right here so um i am completely wireless and i can play pretty much anything that i want hopefully i don't knock this over got a little stand right here um and yeah so i'm gonna be streaming vr games and whatnot um here in the near future i just got to be able to triage my day and um, be able to be available for it um this here, though, is an article by Alex Fuller over at rpgamer.com. And um, it says here, NIS America provided details on the availability of The Legend of Heroes, Trails into Reverie, virtual reality support for the game's Western release. The game has two side scenarios that utilize VR support. The beachside vacay uh, scenario included as part of the base game and the SSS summer splash dlc scenario available as a separate purchase so i i don't this actually was playing on its own because i didn't play it anyway um this is just one more thing i am looking for the reason why i even brought it up is because i'm looking for vr games that people think are pretty cool you know i've checked out bone lab i've played alex half-life alex um, I've got a bunch of others. DMEO is another. If you know of anything, uh, send me a link. In fact, if you type in exclamation point showbot in my chat, it'll give you a link to hometown.showbot.tv. And uh, that's where you can vote for stuff. But if you're still in my chat, you can type in exclamation point S and then a link to an article. And I'll follow that link and check out whatever it is you've submitted. And uh, if it could be a regular article, it could be um, something focused on uh, VR or pretty much anything. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to talk about VR and, and this was a good article for it. So go and check out this game over at rpgamer.com. The next article is over on the Hatch Ideas channel. Ford recalls nearly 519,000 U.S. vehicles over fire risk. Um, it's actually gone higher. It's over 600,000 now. And um, let's see here. The recall covers 2020 to 2023. Pardon me. Uh, 2020 to 2023 year Bronco Sport and Escape SUVs with three cylinder 1.5 liter engines. And um, apparently it's a fire risk with, from possible cracked fuel injectors and will urge owners to have their cars inspected. Let's see if there's anything more specific other than that. It has uh, 54 total reports of 1.5 liter under hood fires, including four with cracked fuel injectors. About 13 others were probably caused by a leaking fuel injector and there have been no deaths. So um, basically go and get your 2020 
to 2023 Ford Bronco Sport and Escape SUVs checked out um, as soon as possible. Uh, the next article is uh, titled A Real Kick in the Teeth, Newport Reacts to Semiconductor Decision. Uh, this is actually in the UK, um, but UK government blocked a Chinese ownership of um, a semiconductor company called Nexperia uh, because there were concerns about the, well, the security of the supply chain if it's owned by a Chinese manufacturer. Um, the UK government blocked new Chinese ownership on security grounds, but Nexperia bosses had planned to build two new plants. Well, now you probably will be able to build two new plans anyway, um, because you can say, hey, we are interested in spinning up two more plants. You blocked us over here. So why don't you give us a grant to bring manufacturing to the UK? The clean room in Newport, South Wales is the size of a football field, but in the industry, it's called a ballroom. According to the article, this is written by Jasper Jolly and, um, find it kind of interesting. Uh, basically there's this, it's basically just a, a giant clean room, but they're making, uh, chips that everybody needs. And instead of sending it to China for manufacturing, it's being produced domestically. I think that it's great. Um, I, I think that there's too much of this, uh, money flowing out of one country into China specifically. Um, and then th that same level of equality isn't necessarily being provided to all of its citizens, um, not just China, but other countries too. And the quality of living for people have gone up tremendously because of this outflow of money into, uh, you know, China. Um, uh, but they have hobbled access to information and I'm not particularly fond of that. Um, even though I have, I think a product that might, uh, be part and parcel to a uh, data gathering, you know, I mean, if all of this is true, like TikTok is data gathering, other companies do data gathering as well. But for some strange reason, a lot of people in the United States and elsewhere have this kind of, kind of looking askance at what goes on. I'm not surprised that a company or a country, I should say, would say, no, 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 no. We don't want this produced or run or owned by um, a Chinese company uh, because it might impact the supply chain. I'm not surprised by it. I don't know. Are you touting the potential expansion is a last throw of the dice for Nexperia to persuade the government to change its mind. And some in the industry are skeptical that the company would expand. Now the recent boom is forecast to bust. The company has three weeks to ask for a judicial review of the decision or divest the site. Quite fascinating. China critics have welcomed the government intervention fearing strategic vulnerability to Beijing in the U S Joe Biden has pushed through plans to invest $52 billion in its chip industry. And the EU has said it'll invest $43 billion to address similar concerns. This is a real issue. This is something. And the quote is pretty, you know, succinct. Edward Stringer, a retired air marshal who is now a fellow at the think tank policy exchange, which is linked to a conservative party, um, says allowing China to control any vital link in these chains would not be sensible. And he's referring to supply chains. And right now a lot of business is hobbled and, and the supply chain is hobbled because Supposedly there's supply chain issues within China manufacturing processes. I don't know. I thought there wasn't any COVID anymore, right? That's because abuse happens in the dark. 
and there is a really black box just solid black box no idea what's going on over there what is going on yeah surveillance satellite surveillance of various regions as abuses Thousands of users mistakenly signed up to a management firm called Hive instead of uh, the buzzy alternative Hive Social. Beatrice Nolan is the author of this over at businessinsider.com. Almost 4,000 people signed up for Hive.com on Monday, far above the site's normal average per market watch. Many of those signing up had mistaken the management platform for social media site Hive Social. Hive.com has also seen a 330% increase in its daily web traffic recently. All because people are trying to find an alternative to Twitter because we don't know just how big the dumpster fire is going to get. Guess we just gotta watch, wait, see what happens. Almost 4,000 people though. You'd think word would get out, hey, maybe Posted on Twitter. Hive over there is not the Hive social that you're looking for. You would be wrong. <laughs> uh, the people who signed up for this uh, Hive.com site are feeling the sting of being reported about on businessinsider.com. I've got a million of these, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty sweet, though, that people are writing about this. And honey, I'm moving on. The next article is in the Word and Tech. Andor season finale solidifies it as one of Star Wars' greatest stories. I loved Andor's season finale, and I don't even want to talk about it. I don't, I, I want to tease you into going and watching it and then come back and talk to me about it and talk to, about, talk to me next week about it. The final season of Andor's first season brought everything full circle and was a powerful reminder of what Star Wars has always been about. Charles Pulliam Moore is the author of this over at The Verge. Um, again, go and check out Showbot. So go to hometown.showbot.tv and you'll be able to vote on all of these articles. I don't really want to talk about this, but um, the season finale uh, closed the door on a lot of the fringe stuff that was there, right? So all of this, the tapestry had been woven, but it hadn't really been completed. But season one's finale really did a real, uh, just a tremendous job in closing all of it up. And I don't want to say what happens but it is season one. So, uh, you know, I, it was really interesting because of all of the people in the room, I was going, well, why wouldn't somebody shut down this hologram sooner? Um, and I was told, well, maybe they didn't suspect that Something more was coming from that. Oh, was there something coming from that? You're going to have to go and watch Andor's season finale and come back and talk to me about it. I'll tease you there, but I'll discuss it next week or um, I don't know, maybe this weekend we can talk about it. Uh, the word in tech is the next article, Mercedes-Benz, to introduce acceleration subscription fee. Yes, that's right. Owners of some Mercedes electric cars in the U.S. can soon pay a $1,200 annual fee to speed up. That's right. If heated seats as a subscription wasn't just greedy bastard enough, Tom Gherkin introduces us to Mercedes-Benz to introduce acceleration subscription fee. This is over at bbc.com. It actually just redirected there, but the URL will take you to my source of this, um, which is Tom Gergen, uh, part of the technology team for bbc.com. For an annual cost of $1,200, excluding tax, gotta stick that in there, 
the company will enable some of its vehicles to accelerate from 0 to 60 a second faster. It comes after rival manufacturer BMW offered a subscription feature earlier this year for heated seats. Mercedes has confirmed. That's funny that they mentioned exactly what I was talking about. Uh, Mercedes has confirmed to BBC News it currently does not plan to introduce acceleration increase in the UK. But it'll be available for purchase in the US because there's more money over there, I guess. Maybe. And, you know. We're greedy. Anyway, so it says here, consumer backlash, Jack McCowan, McCone, Association of Scottish Motoring Writers, president and motoring editor of the Courier newspaper in Dundee said Mercedes's new feature was unsurprising, but dispiriting. When you pay a monthly fee for a phone or for broadband, you're paying for the company to supply and maintain a data network. Mercedes is just saying, hey, you've got everything you need. Why don't you just pay us more so that you can utilize it? I'll move on. The next article is in the word in tech. Possible organic compounds found in Mars crater rocks. A study published in science uh, in science uh, analysis, uh, uh, hold on, uh, let me, I'm going to go to the source because my aggregator grabbed something and it's making my brain hurt. So Haley Dunning from Imperial College London wrote this article for fizz.org. It's titled possible organic compounds found in Mars crater rocks. The existence of organic compounds with carbon hydrogen bonds is not direct evidence of life as these compounds can be created through non-biological processes. A future mission returning the samples to Earth would be needed to determine this. And the study, led by researchers at Caltech, was carried out uh, by an international team, including Imperial researchers. Uh, Professors Mark Sefton from the Department of Earth Science and Engineering at Imperial is a member of the science team who took part in the rover operations. So... Perseverance previously found organic compounds at Jezero's Delta. Deltas are fan-shaped geological formations created at the intersection of a water and a lake at the edge of the crater, you know, pretty much as it approaches um, the water level of whatever body it is. It uh, tends to trickle out and form a fan type of apparatus there. Um, with little rivulets spreading out further and further. It's quite uh, interesting to see. Hello, Z. You have shown up right at the end of the show again. I'm doing a really short one um, because it's Thanksgiving. Yeah. And happy Thanksgiving to you. It's been uh, kind of quiet. <laughs> this is a problem. I agree. So this particular article is talking about um, that there is possible organic compounds in crater rocks on Mars and that there are uh, appearances of flowing water because there are deltas. And so the minerals and co-located possible organic compounds were discovered using Sherlock or the scanning habitable environments with Raman and luminescence for organics and um, chemicals instrument. So they worked really hard to make Sherlock mounted on the ro- rover's robotic arm. Sherlock is equipped with a number of tools, including a Raman spectrometer uh, that uses a specific type of fluorescence to search for organic compounds and see how they are distributed in a material providing insight into how they were preserved in that location. So it's going to be interesting if we can detect in some way um, anything that would allow us to say that there was once flowing water um, in greater abundance. And if there is something buried deep, deep, deep down inside that actually is carbon based, we'd be able to figure out the time, which would be tremendous. I think that it's amazing. But we all have to work together and get our ships 
let me say that together. Uh, we have to get our ship together and send out, you know, a rocket and have it land. Take those samples that have been discovered um, over on Mars and bring them back home. And that's going to be pretty pricey. And right now, hmm, the NASA rocket pretty much destroyed its bed and wet it at the same time. So the, the moon, this last launch that was supposed to send a rocket to the moon, go around the moon and come back basically to, as a, a proof of concept, um, kind of destroyed its platform on the way out and, um, had nothing but leaks, leak, 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 leak all the time. I mean, this thing, was a sieve um, until it launched. And even the day of the launch, they sent in a red crew to go in and try and lock down where the leak was. I mean, we're talking about oxygen flowing one wrong move and the whole thing would have gone up. Luckily they were brilliant at what they did and locked it down. But the only other rocket to turn to is going to be a SpaceX rocket and they're not designed for right now, at least making it to Mars and back or earth, uh, like going to the moon and coming back. Uh, they're not set up for it yet. So we'll see, but I would love to be alive to find out that there is organic material on Mars. That would be wonderful. Um, and that's it for today. Uh, I, today's show is really short. Um, I figured that there would be a little bit of news there. There's been news, but it's some of the stuff that's been talked about in previous episodes, just kind of re getting rehashed. Um, lots of stuff about Black Friday, but um, I'm not really focusing on that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a ton of it that's over at hometown. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, go over there, uh, check it out. It's scattered all over the place because different um, sources are uh, talking about it. Um, FTX is a big thing that's been talked about, uh, and will, <laughs> as more and more revelations come to, uh, bear on what really is going to be the destroyer of futures for so many people that had money in, um, FTX and some of the shenanigans I think that's going to come out is I think that there was money laundering. Um, we'll see though. We just don't know um, because there are forensic analysts that are going through it for the bankruptcy of FTX. And they just discovered that there's a bank in Washington state here in the States that um, was basically invested in twice as much um, as its actual value. And FTX is a trading platform for cryptocurrencies. Um, but it also had its own crypto coin that it invested its own money in and leveraged it with loans to get invested in other things. Basically they were kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul as the adage goes. Um, I wouldn't be able to qualify it as a Ponzi scheme or anything like that uh, because I don't know enough yet about how much money was in this system and if it was constantly being infused. Um, but this trading platform with billions of dollars, one day somebody tweets that, Hey, I think that there's some serious issues with FTX and within 48 hours it's bankrupt and $400 million is exfiltrated right beforehand. Um, so it's really, there's some, uh, some serious questions about FTX. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot to it. Yeah. The, the guy, um, somewhere close to a hundred thousand creditors now and somewhere around $8 billion of, um, debt. Although the bankruptcy is going to reveal probably quite a lot more. So yeah, billions of dollars. And none of that money is FDIC insured. All of the stuff that people invested 
um, and we're trading and FTX was responsible for, um, it's gone. So let me specifically, it was, um, th this is the description of FTX a Bahamas based cryptocurrency exchange that promotes the liquidity and transacting of coins and tokens. And it allowed users to collect or connect their wallets and, and make trades kind of like what Robin hood does, except that Robin hood is, um, real money, real stock, um, FDIC insured isn't being the subject of mass amounts of exfiltration of value and like there's cryptocurrency is there's not a week goes by it seems where there wasn't some robbery you know uh, a railroad robbery somebody comes in finds a, a weakness in the security and exfiltrates you know, 10 million dollars or 100 million dollars um, 400 million wasn't I didn't even shrug at that because that was the perceived value of the cryptocurrency, not actual cash. They have to still sell it. Yep. Yep. And uh, wild west would be and pretty much an understatement for it. I mean, it's nobody knows what's going on in it. And by the time they do, they've lost their money. So, <laughs> but there are a lot of bright people that are making a lot of money off of it. And, um, they're, they're happy when it goes up, but then suddenly they cry foul when it goes down. Um, yeah, but I keep an eye on that kind of stuff. So let's see if there's anything else in here. Black Friday graphics cards. Um, yeah, those are really expensive still. Uh, Nvidia I think is siloing the sales. So instead of they are going to build a vertical of themselves, instead of allowing third party resellers to sell, they can sell for twice the price directly from themselves. Um, and because it's all online, all they need is the fulfillment process and there's enough money there to basically make it so that they don't need anybody else. Some people are still partnering, but I'm sure their margin is dramatically less than what they used to make money off of. Um, and the prices are ridiculously high. You know, that same card, same, same model, different generation is now twice the price. So when it went from 30, 80, 30, 90 to 40, 80, 40, 90, um, the price is doubled. So pretty, pretty wild. And this is one of the articles that I talked about today. FTX owned an $11.5 million stake in a tiny rural bank in Washington state with just three employees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there are sh some shenanigans going on there. Um, but that's it. Did you want to talk about anything, anything going on with UZ? It looks like it's just you and I. Should I send you anywhere? Who is around? Hmm. Just finished your Thanksgiving, huh? Well, that's awesome. Hope it was fun and enjoyable. And again, happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to try and get my VR stuff working uh, because I'm excited about bringing some VR uh, gaming to hometown and to hometown here on Twitch. First one you've participated in in like three years. Oh yeah. Well, I mean the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask a bunch of people if they are into VR and, um, get a, get among us VR going. 
that'll be fun, I think. But there's a lot of there's a lot of games that I don't know, like a lot of people a lot of people really like high resolution games, but high resolution and VR don't necessarily go hand in hand. Um, it becomes a little bit more cartoony, um, a little more surreal, but uh, VR is so much fun. I, I get lost in it for hours. Um, but yeah, so here I'll, I'll introduce everybody to this. So these are the Pico four um, and what I've got is let me, so I have these little battery packs and I can just clip them on and it'll give me three hours upwards of three hours of VR play and I'm totally wireless to PC pretty cool at least as far as I see it I have to be careful that I put this on the stand the right way. Otherwise, yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I'm really interested in is bringing VR and it's going to be within a show called reality hacker, um, because I'm interested in 3d modeling and making it hyper realistic so that you can't tell a difference kind of Westworld stylish kind of a thing, um, where, Essentially, if you can't tell the difference between what's real and fake, does it matter? Um, so I, I hope that VR keeps on growing like that. AR is a different animal. Um, and that's part of the whole reality hacker show that I'm trying to work out the minutia of, um, cause there isn't as much AR VR mixed reality news out there as one might think. Um, usually it's the same, everybody is hashing out the same new revolution revelation, but there isn't that many revelations. Um, I do have one problem with the Pico though, because there's only one U S reseller for the Pico VR headset, which is Verizon. Um, mine is actually zoned for, uh, the, the EU. And that means that. <laughs> my app stores aren't um, connected to what's required for me to use things like virtual desktop within the Pico um, natively. I have to use some other solution um, <laughs> and stream my desktop via that particular solution. And I'd rather not, I want to use virtual desktop but it'll, it'll work itself out as soon as it becomes more fully adopted here in the States, then I'll be able to use the app that's required. It's just not there yet, but until then I'll still be able to stream only just not as fast, not as efficient. Ta-da. So that's it for today, Z and anyone else out there that might stumble across this. I want to, Thank Z in particular for stopping by and saying, ha well, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, really appreciate you coming and hanging out with me. I dig it. In the meantime, I'm going to get out of here and uh, you go and enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving. Get ready for whatever is going to happen tonight in terms of streamers that are going to be doing something old games maybe dunk star will do old games again who knows yep thanks again i will see you tomorrow hopefully see you z ciao everybody <laughs>